the painting Dorian Pink that is now being exhibited at the gallery in Milan was born from the idea of questioning the gender roles and the very stereotyped and strict definition of masculinity and femininity. Uh, the man in the painting um, has some characteristics that, um, that could be related to the way in which the female body has been represented for ages within the European art tradition. You know, the way in which the body is, is on the bed and something of the makeup on that pale face. And, um, and the lady in the painting has something that we could maybe call masculine in her attitude. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. Um, I was also very interested by the idea of um, making a round or circular composition. Um, you know, the ways in which the bodies are placed on the canvas um, constructs uh, a kind of a circle. So it seemed to me that the idea of the circle uh, was connected um, also with the concept of flux and flow between both genders, recalling maybe something of the um, queer theory that liberates us from a very strict and rigid binary logic. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested in this idea of movement and flux. Uh, that's why I, I chose pink as the main color of the composition. The story of pink is full of movement and full of contradictions and also full of ideology. Um, I have been thinking and um, yeah, reading a lot recently about the story of pink and it's been fascinated, for example, learning that pink has been most of its story a male color. Um, in Japan, for example, pink um, is the color of the young samurais who fall in battle. So there, pink is like a sublimated color of blood and a representation of masculinity in the bloom of life. Um, and there's no need to go to Asia, even in, in Western countries, for example, around the late 18th century, there was a very well-known recommendation that businessmen should paint their bedrooms pink because pink will, would uh, stimulate their business minds and brains and they will feel so um, relaxed and recovered after a night surrounded by pink. And it's, you know, it's just after the Second World War when um, these huge companies and department stores started campaigns to label pink as the color of little girls. Um, yeah, and in the painting there are also some objects placed in strategic positions to make the composition more dynamic. So there's, for example, um, a phone charger under the bed or a bulb or a little um, a little lamp on the table. Um, you know, the charger is unplugged though and the bulb is not generating any light and the little lamp on the table, it's even moving itself towards the window as if it were a plant trying to get some, uh, some sunlight. Um, you know, that's not what lamps normally do. They, they are there to generate artificial light when natural light is gone. But um, yeah, they're not there to kind of um, absorb natural light in a performative, photosynthetic action. <laughs> but actually, why not? Uh, you can do that in a painting. Uh, that's what artists do, don't they? They, they play with the expe expectations of the viewer. And um, yeah, they confront them with something that they didn't expect. Um, I have been very, always very interesting, interested in trying to disassemble the functions 
and attitudes we expect objects and people to have. And uh, yeah, this is also connected to the gender roles um, issues.